Welcome back to In Pursuit 360. So a subscriber recently asked, hey, so I've watched all these videos and I'm getting ready to go into my interview. What last minute piece of advice can you give me? So that's what this is all going to be about. I'm going to give you that last minute piece of advice for an interview. And here we go. All right, welcome back. In Pursuit 360, here we go. So subscriber asked, what is a last minute piece of advice you can give before I go into my interview. And I think I've mentioned it before, but I'm gonna go ahead and kind of kind of hit on it again. Um, there are a few things actually, right? So make sure you get a good night's sleep. Yes, it's gonna be hard, your nerves are gonna be going, whatever. Just make that effort to try to get that extra bit of sleep, right? Get rested. Um, make sure that you, you know, you eat a good meal relatively earlier than before your interview time, right? You don't want to be sitting in your interview and have your stomach going, right? Um, keep it light, keep it simple, right? But eat, your, eat something decent. Um, and have fun, right? Have a good time. You've seen these videos. You've got an idea of the questions that they're going to ask you. And, and here's the key. They are not going to expect you unless you are prior law enforcement applying for a new department, they're not going to expect you to know laws and codes and procedures and things like that, right? They want to know how your mind works. What is your mindset? Where, where do you arrive at your answers? How have you handled things in the past? If you're given a new scenario, how do you draw on your past experiences to this new unknown situation, right? So they don't, I can tell you right, they don't want to hear They don't want somebody that's going to say, yeah, I'm going to run in there with my gun drawn and I'm going to take out all the bad guys. Um, that's not what they're looking for either, right? They they don't want somebody who's going to be like, well, I would sit back and wait and see what happened. They don't want that either. Um, they want a common sense answer. They want they want the idea that you're going to think things through. And, and as I've said in a previous video, and I think I've typed it a few times too, Remember the, the famous motto you see, especially in a lot of the older cop shows, right? To protect and serve, right? That's your goal always, to protect the public and to serve the public. So if it is unsafe to do something because it risks uh, the public safety, then you may have to reconsider that. Or you're at least going to have to justify why you may risk uh, somebody possibly getting hurt. So a perfect example of that would be a high-speed pursuit, right? Is there a chance somebody's going to get hurt? Yes. The bad guy? Yes. You? Yes. The motoring public, just a citizen out for a walk? Yeah, that's a possibility too. So how do you justify that decision? So of course, since I brought up pursuit, and they're not going to ask you about this, but just to give you the idea, right? If, if you're pursuing somebody because they went through your radar 15 miles over the speed limit um, and it's a speeding infraction they just won't stop and the car doesn't come back as stolen or anything is it worth somebody possibly getting hurt for what you know right now is just a simple speeding ticket is it worth it is it worth it for reckless by speed is it worth it if it is a bank robbery suspect is it worth it if it ends up being a carjacking vehicle? Is it, and then why? Carjacking vehicle. Well, why would it possibly be worth somebody getting injured? Well, if they've already carjacked one car and you don't know by what means, it could have been by gun, knife, they could have hurt somebody. You're not going to know all that right in that moment, right? But typical carjackings are not a pleasant experience. They're usually some kind of physical force is used, right? So if they do get away and they go to carjack another car, can somebody get hurt? So would that be a justification for continuing that pursuit? That's how your mind needs to work, right? To protect and serve. At what point do you take that next level, that next step, versus the safe way, right? So when do you start leveling off that risk between you know your safety, their safety, the bad guy, um, or just the public in general? When when do you make that decision or how do you make that decision so again you're not going to know the details you're not but they they want to get an idea as an example interview question they asked me and this was several years ago um the question was you're in plain clothes you've got your gun um you got your badge and you know you have your radio or whatever 
you're at a high school basketball game. You go to the concession stand, and as you walk up, you notice that the concession stand is being robbed. There are people all over the place. What do you do? My answer was, and again, I had no... I was part of Law Enforcement Explorers when I was in high school. It's like a like a next step up from like scouts or whatever, right? Explorers. Um, but my answer was, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay back. I'm just as long as nobody's getting hurt or there's no immediate threat, I'm gonna watch. Uh, as the person leaves the building, I'm gonna follow at a distance. Um, I am going to watch and see what kind of vehicle they get in, get a good description of the person, get a description of the vehicle and the license plate, and then call it in and try to update them what direction to travel and things like that. There were too many people around. Think about a high school basketball game. There are all kinds of other people around the concession stand. There are kids all over the place. As you're walking out the lobby, out the door, you don't know who's possibly coming in. You don't know what two kids are sitting out in a car right next to the bad guy's car necking. Right? So, when do you want to engage? If they didn't show a threat, if they're not threatening others at that moment, why would I take the chance on risking somebody's life um, or health, right? So, that's what they're looking for. So, know what they're looking for, right? Last minute advice. Know what they're looking for. They're not looking for you to be an expert. They want to know how your mind works. How does your mind work? How do you process information? I have seen plenty of new hires with college degrees, or we had one that was a retired lieutenant colonel from the Army, um, book smart as all get out. I mean, they could quote code to you, they could look up in the policy manual and say, this is this, and, and, and recite it verbatim, and tell you how it would apply, and the different options, and all this stuff. You put them out in the field, and you have some guy start yelling at them, and they freeze. Boop! They have no, they, they can't, they, they under stress. They couldn't. They couldn't perform it under stress. They couldn't do an immediate recall and then apply it. Right. So, just know that you have to be able to process information. Right. So, I understood the laws well, for a lot of them, but like domestic assault and battery. Right. Not it. They took away. You may arrest and said you shall arrest. You will identify the primary aggressor, and this is the Commonwealth of Virginia. You will identify the primary aggressor and you shall arrest. There was no option. If it was a reported domestic, somebody was going to jail. Um, if there was physical contact, somebody had to go. Didn't matter what they said or anything else. You had to determine primary aggressor and they went to jail. Period. Um, so if you're there and you've got the guy yelling and the woman's yelling and I didn't touch her. Oh, yes, he did. Well, she grabbed me. Well, he pushed me. Well, she slapped me. Well, that's because he stepped on my toe, right? And they're going back and forth, back and forth. You have to know this code, and how do I apply it? So it just, it's the ability to think, think through things. That's why they ask you some of the questions they do, is they want to see how you think. They don't expect you to have these magic answers for going to a domestic. But they do want to see how your brain works when they ask you a question like, name a time in your past when you dealt with somebody at school or at work um, who you had a difficult time getting along with, and then what did you do to resolve that? How does your mind work? How does your mind work? Are you able to reach back in your memories on the spot and come up with an incident similar to that and then verbalize how you resolve the situation and made it better so that's why it's great to understand what these questions could be or what they may look like or they're similar questions and to get you thinking in the direction of how you may want to think about answering them I am not making a video that tells you if they ask this question answer it this way what I try to pass on to you is if they ask a question similar to this, these are things you may want to consider when answering. So I'm trying to make it so that when you go into this interview, you have an understanding already of what they're looking for. So you can prep in your mind. You should be practicing in your mind. Write down these questions that we're going over in these videos and start coming up with some incidents in your life that kind of fit these circumstances so that it's just not new to you, right? It'll help you think. Because when you become a law enforcement officer, 
you learn about these codes, you go through your field training program, and you get released on your own, you're going to be able to understand how you have to refer back to your academy days, refer back to your FTO days, and draw that knowledge into what you're doing in that moment, right? Now that's the same thing, right? You're watching these videos, which is like your academy days, right? And and you're taking notes and, and coming up with these answers. So we'll say that's FTO days. And you go into your interview, that's you out there on your own. That's you applying what you've been learning with me in these videos and probably some other videos. By all means, please go out there and get all the information you can from any other channel that may be doing something similar. Um, I've not really seen any any channel out there that's concentrated on police interviews like I have. I'm trying really hard to kind of stick with that and we're going to get into supervisors interviews and specialty unit interviews and we're going to do all that but let's worry about getting you on board first okay so anyway that's what that, that's my last minute advice for you before going into your interview remember what they're looking for and have fun remember to have fun enjoy it it's fun and if you don't get this one you may get the next one and every interview that you go into is a practice you get more practice you get more experience you get to learn another question oh man because I'll tell you right now you're gonna walk out going damn I wish I would have said that or oh damn I should have said this it's gonna happen right so make a mental note of it so when you go into your next one if you need a next one hopefully you won't but if you need a next one then you're like hey I know how I should answer that question better if it comes up again I'm good to go right so take that experience take this practice take these videos put it all together don't stress over it go in there be comfortable be confident and speak up that's one other thing speak up don't be like and I don't know how many of you have ever seen the movie police academy don't be like hooks um, what is to, to tell me one of your greatest strengths well I think one of my greatest strengths is that I'm really good at talking out loud right no, tell me one of your greatest greatest strengths. Well, I feel that my greatest strength is the ability to communicate with other people, um, not only in being able to understand the importance of inflection in my voice, but also the volume. Depending on the circumstance, I know if I need to get louder, I can get louder. Or in other times, if it's more of a consoling type moment, then I know that I need to kind of lower my voice and stretch my words out just a little bit to make somebody feel more comfortable. Huh? Ah, uh, we think, we think, I got it pretty cool. I just came up with that just like poof no notes no nothing look nothing up my sleeves right anyway all right sorry that's it that's all i got for you for today um hey do me a favor if you haven't already if if you like what you see do me a favor subscribe down below somewhere i'm, I'm not sure where it's going to be but subscribe for me um hit that little bell notification it'll tell you when my next video is coming out or when it has come out and uh smash that like button for me and it helps with the analytics and everything and getting the videos up towards the top of searches and all that good stuff. And if you have to, give me the thumbs down. Just tell me why. Tell me what it is that you don't like or what you'd like to see to make it better. Hey, if you've been on an interview lately, do me a favor, write me a comment. Let me know the question. We can share that with everybody else. I give you my, my best idea on how to deal with a certain question or a situation in an interview. Okay? So, um, yeah, that's it. Thanks a lot for tuning in to In Pursuit 360, and uh, really glad to see you all again, and uh, most importantly, be safe out there.